In this tutorial, I want to go through some of the housekeeping items that we need to take care of in order to get started on the right foot here with this whole process. There's a couple of recommendations I have for how to do this. One of them will consist of just reorganizing our workspace a little bit in order to be more efficient with the tools that we'll need. So I can grab this pane and pull it up. And to create a new subdivision, I go here with my cursor until it's across. And this I would like to use for animation in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and call up the dope sheet for this and switch this to action editor. And one further subdivision, this is just to keep an eye on the UV map situation with the textures. So I'm going to change this over to UV editor. And this one is going to be for the node editor for the material. It's called the shader editor. Then I want to create a handy little export script down here, along with a log.txt file that tells us if things have gone wrong. So first thing I want to do is I want to change this to a text editor. And I want this window to always be around no matter what tab I'm in here. There's an easy keyboard shortcut that you press to trigger a script that is running in here. So I'm going to write out this script real quick. I'm going to create a new text file here. And I want this script to do two things when I trigger it. I want it to save the Blender file. I want it to export the available collections as objects. So here I have to type in import BPY. That's a Python script from BPY import asterisk BPY dot OPS dot WM dot save main file. And then in parentheses, check existing equals false. Next line, BPY OPS export x plane underscore obj parentheses open and close so this is a little python script that if i hit alt p when my mouse cursor is in this window it'll actually trigger the exporter and save the file at the same time and then another handy thing to have here would be another text window that i could actually have the log running in since we've run the exporter now we have an x plane to blender log that appears here if I click on that, it'll let me know if there's any errors during the export. So usually you'll get an indication that something went wrong here. Now there's actually two main philosophies of working with Blender in x to Blender. They represent two workflows. I'm used to one workflow where I have all the parts that are going to be part of an exported OBJ file, part of a collection. Another way of working is to parent the different things to an empty and everything that's attached to this empty basically becomes the exported object. You can choose which method you want to use. Here, by doing this, we've enabled the uh, layer method. But if we don't like the layer method, then we can go to the object properties here. And under X-Plane, we'll find the option to make this an exportable object. And once this is an exportable object, we can do the same sorts of things that we could do in the layer editor. We can create a name here for the OBJ file. And everything that is attached to this empty will then end up becoming that OBJ file. So here I would say ext underscore zero one, and it would be an aircraft part. Here we go the same route with the textures. So what would happen now is if I would go here and hit Alt P, it should again export and give us the same result. In fact, just to be sure, I'm going to delete this file and try the export script again. And there it is, ext zero one. I personally prefer working with the layers because I just find that more overviewable and I'm more used to it. Now, since I was at it already with reorganizing my workspace here, I decided to lay this out a little bit differently. These windows now are split vertically. I find it makes more sense because this list could populate quite drastically and we want to have vertical space to navigate it. And then here that allows us to go through these different tabs to be able to set the settings that are relevant to your workflow here. Now about materials, the x to Blender script actually does not support nodes. And in case you're wondering what I'm talking about, this Lego plane was imported with default materials, this red, this blue, all these materials are actually node based. And that's why we have this little window down here to kind of keep an eye on the nodes. Oh, by the way, the reason I put these windows down here and they're so small, you can always hit control space when you're down here with your mouse cursor and that'll maximize that window. So if you need to have a closer look at this, just hit control space and you get that window up. Same thing here with texturing, which we'll do later on and with the action editor. But back to the materials. So the exporter does not understand the default material settings that come when you import this plane. So to understand this, we first have to go actually to the render properties here. Part of the problem is that it's set to cycles. Depending on which render is chosen, we have different materials options. So if we go to cycles here and change that to EV, then the materials options now suddenly show up as using nodes. So again, the choice of renderer we use determines what material characteristics are available to us. 
So if we select Eevee, now we have a more full-fledged materials editor. And let's see what happens if I export this file now. If I open this in Notepad++, we see that there is an attribute shiny ratio of 0.5 here. And that's the only attribute shiny ratio we see in this whole list. What if we want the attribute shiny ratio to be a value of 1? Well, as long as it's set to nodes, we can't do that because at this point, nodes are unsupported by the export script. So we'd have to turn this off, which would reveal a specular slider here, among others. And this one we could crank up to a higher value. And if we were to export this now and reload this, suddenly we would see the value show up here that we entered, 0 0.892. Now what's happening here is it's using 0 0.5 for most of the materials in the plane. Then it comes to this red material and it assigns that to all these triangles here, and then it goes back to the one that's assigned to 0.5. And the X-Plane to Blender script will automatically shuffle that for you in the background. So X-Plane to Blender does not support using nodes, but for the purposes of working with these files, we will be using nodes. So my recommendation would be to actually go in and turn off nodes for the time being just to set the specular value of a material that you're working with, and then turn nodes back on as we will be working with nodes in Blender once we get to the PBR workflow. So if I now assign this blue material to not use nodes, again, I can turn up the specular. And note that some parts actually have two materials assigned to them. One is a kind of rough blue, and the other one is a darker color here. So only once we turn all of these up to one, will the exporter understand that we want a specular value of one across the board. The reason we want a specular value of one is later on when we do PBR, we need the full range of roughness values from zero to one zero being completely rough and one being completely glossy. And if the specular value isn't set to one, then we only go halfway. Then the most glossy we could have a material is halfway. So these are maybe some things we'll see some improvements on in the x to Blender script in the future. But just know that materials right now won't necessarily look the same in Blender as they would in the sim. So once I've gone through and set all my materials to have specular values of one and re-enabled nodes, I'm gonna export it again reload it here from disk. And here we still see one rogue element of attribute shiny ratio 0 0.5. And here's another one, and here's another one. So that means there's three materials that we still haven't set to 0 0.5. Now, instead of going through and trying to manually find all these materials, I can use a keyboard shortcut, Control L, and select linked materials. This will show me all the objects that have the same material. I can go ahead and hide these for now. And part by part, I can confirm that I've already checked these materials. Uh, here is one culprit. And this object contains two materials, of which one of them is still set to 0 0.5. And once I've worked my way through all of them, I can hit Alt-H to unhide everything again and export it. And now all the materials that we used in that LEGO plane have an attribute shiny ratio of 1. And as you can see, it's not interrupted anymore by any other materials. So I thought it'd be important to work our way through these materials once, just so that there's no surprises and so that you would understand how the exporter handles these situations, that you need to set EV as a rendering engine, and that these nodes will be used later on for our workflow but aren't supported by the X-Plane to Blender script. In a future version of X-Plane to Blender, this might change, so we'll have to keep our eyes peeled for what happens. Now, just by the way, I thought I'd point out that we're not limited to working only with this particular plane. We chose this plane because it's an easy, simple plane with few parts to assemble. But uh, the importer here actually allows us to import several different formats. I downloaded a couple here from this website, omr.ldraw.org. And if I do, for example, a search here for plane, I get all sorts of models here that I could download and import into Blender. And I can get a nice little preview of the plane here and then download it. And back in Blender, these planes show up as MPD files. So let's click on one of these and import it. And there we have it. This one is not oriented the same way and we'd probably have to do a bunch of cleanup, but it still looks like it's a workable file. Or let's try something else here. Jet airliner. Hmm, that's a nice model too. The important thing to realize here is that we need the orientation to be with the nose pointing in the positive Y direction. Here's another example. And even if the plane is still in a different format, you can go to MLCAD and then this one can be saved as an MPD which would then show up in your list of available imports here. So you can do an online search for any plane you're interested in building. It'll give you a kit number here, and then you can look that kit number up and see if there's an LDR file or some other format available for it, and then you can work with that instead of having to build it from scratch. But for now, we'll stick to this cute little plane. We'll see if we can make it fly in X-Plane. Now, for the next tutorial, I want to spend some more time in Plane Maker again.